We're back here on CJLO, the main event show, your latest in professional wrestling talk. It is 11.06 CJLO time, and uh, we, we've been talking professional wrestling the last half an hour. We were on here until noon, and a little earlier in the program, I, I made a little mention to the fact that we're going to be having somebody on who was, of course, officially released from World Wrestling Entertainment this past week. Uh, of course, we're talking about Sean Davari, also known as Cosro Davari in uh, in that company. How you doing today, Sean? Good. Yeah, how are you guys doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, great to have you on the program. Of course, your uh, mention uh, announced on Dartaby.com this past week. What exactly uh, happened? What were the circumstances le- uh, leaving to you uh, leaving the company, World Wrestling Entertainment? Well, actually, this whole thing has been kind of boiling down for the last few months. Um, a while ago, I was offered a new contract to resign with WWE for another three years, and uh, there were certain things I wanted to do within the company uh, before I would resign my deal, and uh, they were trying very hard to meet me on all these demands I had before I resigned, and they did almost all of them except for we couldn't really come to a, a conclusion on the creative end. But they took care of everything except for that one thing we couldn't get figured out between both parties about what we'd like to do creatively. And once it, it kind of became clear that the creative stuff they couldn't promise, not necessarily say they were or were not going to do it. It was just nothing they could for sure promise. Um, at that point, then I just kind of have a, had a separate meeting with uh, Talent Relations, Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon, and uh, I told them that it's most likely I won't be re-signing my new deal. And actually, uh, if they'd be mind if I... I got out of my current deal a little early, um, and they all seemed, you know, very happy with that. That I was upfront about it and didn't drag this whole thing on to the last day, and then just be like, "No, I'm not going to do it." You know, they appreciated the honesty to let them know up front that you know I'm not going to be signing this new deal, and you know, if if your guys' plans for me are starting from you know over the next three years, then it's probably just better if I get out now and start to be able to pursue other opportunities. So was this something that you uh, thought about over time, or was a, it was an instinct decision at the, at the at the last minute? No, no, this is something I put some thought to for a while, just um, where my career ha- was heading versus where it's been before. Uh, and, and then after I put some significant thought to it and then kind of weighed out my options of what would be available to me outside of WWE, um, once I got the, all that figured out, then I, you know, that's when I came together and told them that I probably won't be resigning that new deal. Well, you mentioned creative and, you know, the frustration over, you know, trying to figure out something that would work for you on, on television. And uh, we heard, obviously, a lot of rumors. You can't believe everything that you hear. But a, a couple of ideas that were seemingly tossed around, you could tell us if they were true or false and if you would have liked to do them, i.e., um, there was talk that uh, when Great Cali was going to be uh, getting a new translator, I know you were his manager back uh, before, but then when he was going to get this translator that he now has, there was rumors that uh, you were going to be under consideration and all of a sudden uh, you weren't uh, chosen for it, or I don't know if you were in the running for it officially. You could touch on that. And uh, also, uh, there was also rumors that you were going to run with the cruiserweight uh, division and possibly become a cruiserweight champion and or, or at least get a push within that division. So uh, was that true or false? And what's your thoughts on the... Uh, cruiserweight division as it stands right now in the WWE? Um, as far as the whole uh, translator deal, the, the guy that's with him right now, I don't know if, I've never heard anything about my name being in contention with that um, after we split up. Uh, when we split up, you know, I was told, you know, from uh, from creative that, you know, they had separate plans for me and him, and um, I actually don't think anyone was supposed to be with, with Kali for a while. I, I remember when I uh, he got sent to, we were both on ECW together and he got sent to Raw and I got sent to SmackDown um, at that at that time he didn't have a manager or a translator and he didn't have anyone for a few months and actually there was one member of the creative team that is actually Indian and uh, he's from very uh, close to where Kali was from in India and they actually speak the same language because I guess there's seven different languages in India and they happen to be from the same region that spoke the same language which is Hindi and I think once, you know, over time they saw backstage, this writer was able to translate them all his stuff, like, hey, your flight is leaving at 9 o'clock on Wednesday, or, you know, we need you to go here to do this autograph signing, or next week you're supposed to go to Europe. They thought, wow, this is pretty convenient that they actually speak the same language. And once they saw that, they were just like, let's just put this guy with on TV to help do his promos. I don't think it was ever like a, a, a idea on the table that we need to find this guy another manager. Mm-hmm. Shoot, should we use 
Navari, should we get someone new, yada, yada, yada. As far as the cruiserweight stuff, um, that stuff I never know. I, I was never really in the loop and all that. I know there was a point in time, several times, where they wanted to reboot it. Sometimes they did it. Sometimes they wanted to run with one guy or two guys. Sometimes they felt that if because the division is so small, if they do anything with it, it should involve all the guys. So specifically, if I was supposed to get a title run, I don't know. I was never told I was. I was never told I wasn't. And something I noticed is that because there were so many talented guys, and, and unfortunately there wasn't enough time in a two-hour broadcast to showcase all of them, whatever they did like to do, title stuff, they liked to involve as many guys as possible, and that's why a lot of the times you see on pay-per-views and TVs, the uh, six-mans, four-mans, mm-hmm. you know, eight-man elimination, six-man tag, four-man, you know, free-for-all, stuff like that, so they could involve more people than just the champion and whoever was running with them. So you're leaving the guaranteed contract at World Wrestling Entertainment to, to wrestle elsewhere. Have, have you received any offers from independent promotions, uh, possibly international wrestling pro- federations, or even possibly uh, any interest from TNA? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually uh, out of town right now. I did an independent show last night. I got an independent show tomorrow. Uh, my schedule is pretty full with shows coming up every weekend, or you know, even some during the week, autograph signings, a lot of conventions and stuff coming up. Um, I've received several offers from different Japanese promotions to go over there. Um, you know, I have a 90-day no-compete clause, so I haven't really had the official talks with TNA, but I watch their show and I like their product a lot. And, you know, if there was an opportunity to do good business there, I'd be more than happy to go if they'd be happy to have me. Uh, during your time in the WWE, you switched brands pretty often. You went from uh, SmackDown and ECW back and forth. I, I think you were on Raw for a bit as well. And uh, they liked you more as a, a manager of, over wrestling for the most part. Why, why, why do you think uh, that creative didn't really have anything for you? Uh, um, as far as the wrestling stuff, you know, the manager stuff, obviously when I first came in, they didn't know who I was or what I was capable of. And, uh, you know, towards the end of the Davari Muhammad Hassan uh, program, it wasn't like a tag team, but we were, we were both showcased as wrestlers. I first came in just as a manager and once, you know, we only, you guys only see what happens on TV, but a lot of the house shows, they had me wrestling in matches and stuff, and once I think enough agent reports came back to the creative team that, you know, this guy's a, a decent worker, and, you know, he might be able to showcase his wrestler on the show. That's when we started doing a lot of the stuff with, like, Shelton Benjamin, where we were doing, you know, I would wrestle him, Muhammad wrestle, and then we'd have the handicap match, and I started working with Shawn Michaels and Jericho, and obviously the stuff with Hogan, and, and you know, it just gets snowballed from there where we weren't really a tag team, but we were both big showcases wrestlers. Um, after that, uh, when we got when I got sent home after the Hassan and Navari gimmick kind of ended, um, to you know, I honestly took it as a compliment. Where a lot of times they paired me with guys that needed to get a lot of heat on to get them prepared for main event stuff, like right away. You know, with Kurt Angle, obviously he was so popular amongst the fans that that people started cheering for him. And, you know, mm-hmm. WWE management felt that I was such a strong heel. They're like, you know, put Davari with Kurt Angle so, so people will still boo him. We don't need him to turn into baby face. We need the heel. You know, from a professional standpoint, that's a huge compliment to say that, you know, you have so much heat and you do your job so well that we're going to pair you with this guy to keep him that way. And then uh, it went on to Mark Henry. Mark Henry came back from a, a pretty severe injury, and they're like, you know, we don't have the luxury of three or four months to get this guy ready for main event program we need him in the main event you know in a couple days and and how can we put as much heat on this guy as possible i know let's put with davari davari's got all the heat in the world and that was the same thing same thing with kali they didn't have a lot of time to get him ready for a main event from the night he debuted the next week he needed to be ready for a main event program with with the undertaker you know how do you do that with davari he's got all the heat in the world so from a professional standpoint i never took it as a they didn't have faith in me as a wrestler. I just took it as a pretty big compliment that they had. I, they thought I had so much heat that they could put me with these guys to kind of push them along a lot more quickly than building them up over weeks and weeks.